Hey riders, welcome to another video in our Adventure Motorcycle Review Series. I'm Eric Lang with Ride Adventures and I've been riding guiding motorcycle trips around the world since 2008. In today's video, and just in case Armageddon or the zombie apocalypse is just around the corner, I'm going to talk through why you might want to choose a motorcycle from the Adventure Dual Sport class. I'm going to show you these four great examples behind me here. And in the end, I'm going to choose which of these would be the best if the shit ever really does hit the fan. So let's get into character. So all that has unfolded since 2020 and since then might have some of us thinking a little bit more about the future. You know, you've got some of the shelves in stores that are empty now and you think about food shortages. There are cargo ships lined up off of the ports of different cities around the world, unable to unload because of supply chain issues. You've got cyber attacks and cryptocurrencies and political corruption and all sorts of things that might have you thinking a little bit more about the future. Well, in the future, you know, maybe fuel is available, and so it's not so hard for you to get around. If fuel is available, maybe you'll be eating the Dinky D dog food as well for lunch, but, you know, having more than just your feet or a bicycle to get around could come in handy, and so in that situation, a motorcycle is actually a great option. You've got fuel efficiency, but you've also got agility. If roads are out or there are obstacles in the way, things that could make it hard for a four-wheeled vehicle or a truck to maneuver, a motorcycle can take care of and get you through. So with all the fun and recreation and travel and exploration possibilities of motorcycles in mind, maybe there's a specific reason like the ones I'm talking about in this possible future that the adventure dual sport category of bikes is the one that's vastly outselling the other categories like sport bikes and cruisers and stuff like that. And so, aha, there's Eric talking about adventure bikes once again, but there's a reason for it. Again, I choose and we enjoy to ride these bikes that are the most physically capable of going a variety of places over a variety of terrains that we go on on our, on our tours. You know, I've been riding these on five continents around the world for the past decade. We're working on these bikes and we know that they are essentially the most capable and the most diversified in their abilities. So again, imagine a future where maybe the shelves in the stores are a little more empty than they even are today. Maybe the zombies are coming up behind you and life is, you know it is just a bit different than it used to be. So in that scenario, why would you want to choose perhaps a 2019 Honda Africa Twin? Well, in terms of agility, like I mentioned before, you've got the ground clearance and suspension travel to get on or off road, to get over the dead bodies of zombies or to get yourself through tight situations that you might not be able to on other bikes. So very agile and capable bike would be a great option to have. Why would you choose a 2019 Honda CB500X? Well, again, like the Honda behind it, you've got that reliability. Honda is known for the reliability year after year, and the parts availability on a bike like this might stand for a long time because there's so many of them in circulation. If you're needing parts, it's best to have a very common bike that is out there, and maybe you can source parts for it deep into the future. Why would you choose perhaps a 2021 Yamaha Tenere 700? Well, we think like the rest of the Yamahas, it certainly falls into that reliable category, but you've also got a middleweight option now. Instead of like maybe a heavier Africa Twin, you've got something that's lighter, even more agile, again, with that suspension travel and ground clearance. And like the other bikes, you've got luggage carrying capability, important for getting your ammo and your <laughs> munitions or your food and your shelter along on the road with you as you need to move around. And then of course, there's the 2000 Kawasaki KLR650, a classic. You might choose this one because it is the most budget-friendly now for you to purchase and perhaps budget-friendly going on to the, into the future. It's also a bike that would fall under the category of easy self-maintenance. You know, you're carbureted instead of having computers and fuel injection like the other bikes. And so in addition to having all the capability of the adventure bike class and category, uh, you've got that reliability of Kawasaki and ease of self-maintenance and parts availability as well. So, so why do we bring these four specific bikes out there when there are actually many that could fall into this category? Well, each of them actually has most of or all of the characteristics that we just mentioned. You've got your reliability. You're talking about manufacturers that year after year hold the top four positions of being the most reliable bikes. You've got agility through suspension travel and ground clearance. You've got some middle weights, not just heavy weights like that. You've got parts availability from bikes that are out there. And each one of them has the luggage carrying capability that, for example, a sport bike or a crotch rocket wouldn't have. So in the end, 
If I was to choose one of these, the absolute Armageddon, apocalyptic, end all be all of motorcycles, it's the KLR right here in front of me because it has the most of all of those characteristics we just talked about, the ease of self-maintenance, the most budget-friendly. Maybe it's a bike you don't ride all the time, but you do just want it around for the future. And so the KLR is that budget-friendly bike with the cheap parts and uh, they run forever and they just keep, keep going on and on. And another reason I would choose this in particular over the three behind me is because it is the most simple for that self-maintenance reason. With a simple carburetor as opposed to computers and fuel injection and dependency on perhaps the dealer's computer to fix uh, things on your motorcycle, you've got a bike that's just real simple, a battery and a spark plug and you're up and running. And so while the other bikes might serve you better in the meantime as you're trying to get out and explore and before the apocalypse, you might enjoy an Africa Twin or a Tenere 700 a little bit more than the KLR. When it comes down to it, if I had to pick one of these bikes for the rest of my life, it's the good old KLR. Now, we did not go through a lot of the specifics on these bikes. We've done that in previous videos, and you can check the links in the description below, and you'll see reviews on the two Hondas and the Yamaha. Not the KLR yet, but maybe that is yet to come in the future. Some honorable mentions that fall into this category of adventure dual sport bikes that would be great for the zombie apocalypse would be things like the Suzuki DR650, the Honda XR650L, the early 80s BMW R80 or R100 GS, you know, bikes that again, like the KLR that I've chosen here, are simple. A battery, a spark plug or two, no computers, no electronics, something that you can work on on your own, and they're ultimately very reliable bikes to begin with. And so now the question is for you. In the two-wheeled category, which bike would you choose? If the zombies are coming after you, if the aliens have landed, which is the best adventure bike or dual sport or of any motorcycle? Is there even a category I haven't covered that would be the best bike? Make sure to let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell so you see future videos. Right on, and we'll see you out there. And, ah, uh, dude, sorry, you're, <laughs> when you go, the zombie apocalypse is just around the future. Just a